Olympic hammer thrower Gwen Berry became a topic of political debate this week, drawing criticism and praise for turning away from the American flag during the national anthem to protest racial injustice. Republican Senator Tom Cotton and Congressman Dan Crenshaw gave their opinions on Barry's protest. Let's watch. We don't need any more activist athletes. I, I, you know, <laughs> she should be removed from the team. The entire point of the Olympic team is to represent the United States of America. Right. It's the entire point. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's one thing when these NBA players do it. Okay, fine, we'll just stop watching. But now the Olympic team, and it's, it's multiple cases of this, they, they, they should be removed. That, that should be the bare minimum requirement is that, you, is that you believe in the country representing. I don't think it's too much when athletes are competing to wear the stars and stripes, to compete under the stars and stripes in the Olympics for them to simply honor that flag and our anthem on the medal stand. Uh, Miss, if Miss Barry is so embarrassed by America, then there's no reason she needs to compete for our country. Exactly. She should be removed from the Olympic team. Gwen Berry tweeted out in response to the backlash, quote, these comments really show that people in America rally patriotism over basic morality and the sentiments after the death of George Floyd regarding black lives were a, ho a hoax. Host of the Habituation Room podcast, Francesca Fiorentini, and senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum, Patricia Anwuka, joined us down to weigh in on the matter. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Patrice, the obvious question that's being tossed at a lot of people on the right like us these days is, is this an, is this an instance of conservatives embracing cancel culture, which they spend so much time, we spend so much time denouncing? <laughs> well, you might view it that way. I mean, certainly uh, Representative Crenshaw and uh, Senator Cotton are, are very ardent in their support of seeing her removed from the Olympic team. I would not. You know, I think the Olympic uh, athletes represent are supposed to represent the best of what our country has to offer. And certainly I disagree with Barry's uh, what she did. I disagree with how she views, um, you know, her as being one of the people, but not the American people. But at the same time, her athletic acumen is what has gotten her to where she is. And I think we can celebrate that. That said, I do think she's doing a huge disservice um, by, you know, her protest. I don't think she is bring the positive attention to the issues of racial injustice that she thinks she is. Um, and she's, you know, she's, uh, people look to America um, as a beacon of light, recognizing that America is not perfect, but certainly a place where they want to be. And I think she d makes America the place that people do not want to come to. And me, speaking as an immigrant who came to this country, um, I, 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 I definitely disagree with her on that. Pierina, watching this unfold over the last couple of days, Feel, it feels like 1968 never happened. It's like, how on earth are we condemned to go through this again in, in 2021? We have statues in this country celebrating people who, who did it, almost the exact same protest in, in 1968 in Mexico City. How is it that we can have statues celebrating that act mm. and have Fox News interviews condemning the same act today? Yeah. Absolutely, Ryan. I mean, I'm just going to jump in and agree with you there. Um, 1968 Olympic gold and silver medalists, right? Uh, uh, Tommy Smith and uh, John Carlos raised their fist, arguably in a far more politicized form of protest during the national anthem. Same exact thing. I'm sure there was outrage then. There is outrage now. We've decided that, you know, their acts in 1968 were warranted. And, you know, 50 years later, we're here doing the same thing. And I think what it shows us is that we still have yet to do right by black Americans, especially when it comes to the issues of racial injustice, uh, policing reform, criminal justice reform, all of these things still exist. And just to respond to, to the other guests, I, I absolutely hear you that maybe this doesn't feel like the best representation of America, but I would argue that neither is the police cracking down on peaceful demonstrators all through last summer, right? Yes, there were instances of violence, but the vast majority of violence was coming the other way from police officers over responding, overreacting to peaceful demonstrations. So I would argue that that does far more to diminish our role in the world and our role as a beacon of freedom um, than anything, than, than a woman putting a, a, her hand on her hip. I will also say like, this is exactly cancel culture. That is what it is. But conservatives have this problem, which is 
they subscribe to this basic ideology, which is called, it's okay when I do it. So it's wrong when anyone else does it, but it's okay when I want to cancel someone. If you guys don't remember, cancel culture really began in earnest in the last few years. In 2016, Trump is elected. Stephen Colbert goes on his own show and starts making fun of him. Conservatives, cancel Colbert was the hashtag. And from then on, everyone's looking at progressives on the left. No, 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 no. It's been conservatives. Well, I mean, I wrote a column actually like a month ago saying that the, the both sidesism when it comes to cancel culture is so accurate that actually people who support it on both sides should literally just say that they, they have these moral values and they believe they often warrant cancellation and that we would all be better served if right. that's what actually happened. And I think what Crenshaw was doing was trying to make this distinction between, you know, on the NBA, you just tune it out. And when it's the Olympics, it's like a different situation. Patrice, go ahead and respond um, to, to that argument. What do you make of it? And what, what's your response to the point about police um, being a, a poor representation of the country? Well, I don't think we're, uh, law enforcement uh, use there to protect those who want to peacefully demonstrate as a poor representation of our country across, over, overseas. I don't think police and law enforcement cracking down on, on people who are destroying public and private property, destroying small businesses, um, is, uh, is, is in any way negative or harmful. And even worse and most disturbing that I just heard is that for some reason, black Americans like myself, I'm black, although I was born in another country, somehow America has not done right by me or many blacks in this country, I think is absurd and over the top. I recognize and I'm an ardent supporter of criminal justice reform that actually helps people who have served their time uh, be able to be reintegrated into society and find work and find opportunity. I've written about it, I've championed it, I've even testified before Congress about it. But what I'm not going to agree with is to say that everything that this nation has done to blacks you know, today, that they continue to face the same challenges that they faced in the 50s. Or let's go back to the 1936 Olympics in, uh, in Germany, where Adolf Hitler put Nazism on full display and you had Jesse Owens as a true patriot and athlete representing the United States. He could have taken that opportunity to talk about racism, pervasive racism in the United States, but he took that opportunity to represent what America rep is, is best at, which is uni unifying people of different backgrounds who look very differently but are common, but share the common beliefs uh, together. Our country is not perfect. We have work to do, but the kind of inflammatory rhetoric that pretends like there has been no progress for blacks over the past how many centuries in this country that does no good. And when we actually have opportunities to work together, like we're seeing Senator Tim Scott and Representative, um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, one of the uh, Democratic representatives working on criminal justice reform bills, when we have those opportunities, I hope we can come together and support that kind of reform. Otherwise, I think a lot of what I hear, including on this panel, is empty rhetoric. And Francesca, can you talk about that, that history as well? Because, uh, again, it, it's, it's as if uh, the the 1950s, 60s, 70s just just never never happened. J JFK, for instance, ca came around. He was he was he was not some civil rights champion. You know he, he and one of the main reasons that he came around was that he he thought that that the way that police were treating black Americans was making the fight against communism in unaligned countries more difficult because the Soviet Union was able to say, look, the United States says this, but actually they've got a legalized Jim Crow system. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, you should, you should elect social Democrats or, or you should elect, you know, socialists in, in your country and you should align with our orbit. And, and Kennedy and other uh, advocates of the kind of um, American empire were like, oh, this is a bad argument against us. We need to do something about this. These Bull Connors are killing us. And so why would that be any different today? Like why, why would this, the same images of violence in the, in the streets by police today which China be any is using. different? Which, which China absolutely is using. Right. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I think, first of all, you know the history clearly, and so I don't need to repeat it, but, but I do think that it is interesting that, you know, 
conservatives largely are very allergic to any kind of government government mandate. Anything that seems like a government mandate, including wearing a mask to protect yourself and others from a you know rampant global pandemic. No, 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 no. That's socialism. That's communism. You know, we live in America. We're so-called free, right? But as soon as it comes to the flag or the anthem, suddenly, oh, we are just the we are North Korea. Oh yeah, we are complete. Like if you do not fall in line when it comes to the anthem or the flag, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Then we are issue you your government suit. Like what? It's so ridiculous, right? If it's if we're a country of freedom of expression, then that freedom includes the right to sit down during the anthem, the right to skip the anthem. And to be fair to Gwen Berry, she actually didn't want to. She didn't know the anthem was going to play. She, yeah. Her plan was not to make a political statement. It was to stay behind in the locker room and then go out. But the anthem did play. And again, she didn't raise a black power fist. She put her hand on her hip. Yeah, she's since said that she believes it was a, quote, setup. And Patrice, I want to ask you to expand on your point about Jesse Owens, because I do think that example is an instructive one to contextualize this whole conversation, because, and Ryan and I have talked about this before, where the line is really falling here is on whether it's appropriate. Like, I don't think anybody on the right is saying that Gwen Berry doesn't have the right to do what she did, but the argument would be that the, you know, the, the Olympic Committee then, the American Olympic Committee, has the right to revoke her. Um, and I don't think you argued for that as well. I think you said you know, she, she does have the right and she should be able to do that. But what is your argument for the tactic um, and the optics behind presenting yourself as an, an athlete um, and as a black athlete at the Olympic Games? What, what, to, to your Jesse Owens point. Yeah, you know, I think my, my larger point is this is a, a unique uh, opportunity that these athletes have to showcase the, the best of what America has to offer from an athletic perspective. Uh, they absolutely have their free speech rights and, and recognizing that uh, they're not necessarily on their homeland territory uh, under their feet in doing so. But it, even in protesting, I guess they're representing what Americans do also, which is to be able to protest. That said, um, it's one thing to protest to, to air your dirty laundry, so to speak, from home outside. It's another thing when you are, as Jesse Owens did, was really representing uh, what the, the, the allied forces representing the United States against a very pervasive, very, talk about white supremacy, um, against Germany, Ger uh, Nazi German Germany in 1936. And he he demonstrated through both his his performance in winning what three or four gold medals but also in just standing and showing that yes well adolf hitler thinks that i am less than a subhuman i am as good if, and i am better than the the other white uh german uh, athletes that I'm, I'm 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 competing against so i think there was a, optically there was a very stark stark contrast there Gwen Berry is a different situation. She's not talking about, you know, the people she's competing against. She's talking about what goes on at home. And, you know, we can even get into whether she, her view of, of, uh, of, of all police killing all black people is, is accurate. Maybe I'm over, over uh, you know, maybe conflating it a little bit. But I think it's two different situations. And I would not put Jesse Owens and Gwen Berry on the same playing field when it comes to what they were protesting and why they're protesting. The only similarity they have is, yeah, they're two high level athletes, very accomplished, who were using, you know, we were in a, p a position where they could protest and one chose not to and one just chose. Right. But also, I mean, the context was completely different. So you can't ignore the role of the social movements in, in the decisions of people to to engage in, in activism. And then there was not. A, a massive uh, civil rights social movement in the 1930s. Yeah, I mean, I think timing obviously yeah, is, Im is important context. No, I, I think that's understandable, but this is a really great discussion and appreciate you both for uh, talking through it. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. I could talk forever on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up, uh, Brianna Joy Gray discusses why Congressman James Clyburn is trying to stop Nina Turner's rise in the polls when rising returns. <laughs> <laughs> 